Today we have a man who can do it all. Josh Freilich is an elite level competition shooter and he shoots all the things. Pistols, shotguns, rifles, potato guns. Okay, scratch the last one. Although if anyone knows about competitive potato gun competitions, do send that Josh's way. Let's see if we can fill his inbox on that starchy subject. Anyways, enough about the french fry freedom flingers. This episode is actually about Josh's everyday carry. We're taking a look at what this pro carries for protection and when he changes his go-to to something else. We'll get his thoughts on his favorite ammo for EDC. He talks about how weather actually dictates his firearm. We hear about the weirdest gun he's ever tried to carry. And he unveils his favorite pocket potato pistol. Just kidding. This is Gearbox Talk with Josh Fralick. Like there's a lot of content of you out there, man, but I'm excited to get you on my show and answer some really beginner level to intermediate level to maybe, maybe we'll squeeze in a couple of advanced things on this show. We'll see here how we go on uh, or where it goes, but how's it going, man? I'm doing really good. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on the show. Yes, sir. All right, let's dive in. I want to, you know, first kind of dive into talking a little bit about what precautions you recommend somebody taking to ensure you're carrying safely while also being able to, you know, get, have that quick and easy access that people want with EDC. Yeah, so anytime somebody's talking to me about safety and carrying, first and foremost, you got to know your platform. So you've got to spend some time with the pistols that you're planning on carrying. Make sure you understand how they function, where the controls are, all of the ins and outs of the gun. So just become an extension of your body. Uh, and then beyond that, right, just all the basics of firearm safety, right? We keep our finger off the trigger until we're pressing out on the target, things like that to make sure that. Um, the last thing we want to do is have a negligent discharge or something like that. So what we're doing is getting familiar with our guns, making sure we fire or carry, follow the firearm safety rules of treat every gun as if it's loaded, make sure we keep our finger off the trigger, like the big stuff, right? And then beyond that, I want people to realize that their clothes are going to be in the way. And so when you're talking about working with a pistol and you're walking, talking about concealed carry, what I like to do is spend a couple minutes every day when I'm getting ready to go out and I put my pistol on my person, I have the gun unloaded, I point in a safe direction and I dry fire a few draws and walk through the movements with the clothes that I'm wearing that day, with the gun that I'm going to wear to make sure that I don't have something hanging up that would cause me an issue, a safety issue, should I need to get to that pistol quickly. So those are some of the things that I talk with individuals about in regards to making sure you can get to that gun safely and quickly. Yeah, those dry fires with the clothes on is an interesting tip. It's one, we've done a lot of EDC shows and I don't think I've heard that one. So that's, that's interesting advice. Um, uh, you, you kind of alluded to the, this next question here. You, it sounds like you have some varying EDC setups. Uh, I was gonna ask you, like, do you have one favorite or do you kind of vary your, your carry a little bit? Well, I'll tell you, I, I, I like to be familiar as familiar as possible with platforms that I carry and so you'll notice a trend if we talk some of the guns my favorite is my uh, it's a staccato c2 right so it's a nice a fairly compact pistol with 15 plus one uh, nine millimeter gun shoots awesome um, and I, I carry that whenever possible. You know, in the summer with shorts and a t-shirt on, it becomes a little bit more difficult or I'm a business guy. So during the day, if I'm wearing slacks and a button up, like that doesn't necessarily fit the bill. So I've got some other options there as well, but that's my go-to. If I'm in a hoodie or if I'm in uh, you know, a flannel or something like that, running around with jeans on, like I'm in a C2 all day long. Nice. How does weather impact what you carry? You know, I'm kind of curious to hear your answer on this. We kind of joked a little bit about it before the show, but I mean, it does impact yep. what you're wearing. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to hear how you kind of think through, uh, you know, your clothing and the weather. Yeah, that's how it plays out. So depending on weather, I'm wearing more clothes. I'm mm -hmm. in Minnesota, man. So up here, you talk about cold, we get cold. And in the winter, I'm, I've got layers on, right? And so the more I'm wearing, the bigger gun I can get away with carrying without printing. Um, I know there's a, all kinds of conversation out there online about should I 
care if I'm printing? Should I open carry? Should I do all these things? I'm of the opinion that I would prefer no one knows that I'm carrying so that I'm not the first guy that's the target should something go down around me. Yeah. And I'm just a family man. I'm with my kids. I'm with my family. If, like, I don't want to be uh, the, the first person everybody's looking at should there be a reason for me to take my firearm out and, and, and use it. And so I, I like to... Uh, I like to stay as concealed as possible. And so what that means is lots of clothes means bigger guns um, all the way up to like, um, I'll take the magwell off of guns like this. So like this is a Staccato XC. So it's a full size nine millimeter. This is actually my race gun. So I shoot three gun with it. Mm -hmm. It's got a red dot on it. Uh, I can run a 27 round mag as a backup mag in my back pocket. So you start talking about something you could, you could carry with a lot of rounds on it. Super capable. You know, we shoot these things out to like 200 yards in competition. Like if I'm shooting at it, I can hit it with that gun. And so lots of clothes on means I can conceal a, a pretty large pistol should I want to. You talk about blending in. This is why I just go everywhere in full camo. No one ever. Oh, is that what you do? <laughs> <laughs> that is one strategy. Yeah. <laughs> it would actually make you stand out in a lot of different situations, right? You're like in church, yeah. just wearing full camo, <laughs> you get the mask on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Um, you know, you, you've already kind of laid out several different firearm options and yeah. I, for somebody that is, is really looking for that first gun, you know, they're hearing, you know, you've talked about a lot of different capacities even already. What do you yeah. take into consideration when you're choosing that firearm that's right for you? What are some of the other things that we should, we should talk about here? Yeah. So a uh, couple big ones. Uh, can you conceal it? effectively can you shoot it effectively um and will it have uh stopping power i mean people talk stopping power and knockdown power and all that stuff today's modern ammunition you know like I, I carry in all of my guns the federal hst line rock solid so you're talking about really cool technology and ammunition so i can run 380 or i can run nine millimeter and feel confident that the ammo should i need it will do its job and so it takes out some of the old school concerns that i need like a 45 ACP in order to like really be safe. Like forget that. I want capacity. I want to know that I can shoot it well and I want to know I can conceal it. And so those are the big ones that I'm thinking about uh, when I'm picking a gun. Yeah, man, that's, um, that's something that comes up every time. And I, I just I'll, I'll call it out for people that uh, are, are maybe new and are trying to find that EDC. I've had a lot of EDC shows so far. And the one that comes to mind, I think the last time this came up was with Tim Kennedy. And I brought up stopping power because it's something you see people argue over in forums. And he's like, dude, yeah. no, no, we're not talking about that. Like that, it, it, it's not a thing. Like we just focus on something you can shoot. So yeah. if you if you really enjoy this show, we'll put a link to the Tim Kennedy show in there. It just give you some uh, variety of opinions. But that is something that like the pros are aligned on is like find something you're comfortable with. Um, you know, I, I'll put a full disclosure here. We both work at Federal. Love those guys. Uh, love the Federal team. Yeah. But I, I want to. I, I imagine we're going to have some bias here towards the Federal. Uh, product because you, you are a fan. Um, but I want to ask you like what ammo is best suited for EDC? You know, how do you, um, and, and, and self-defense and, uh, other purposes maybe. Uh, but I'm kind of curious on in this EDC conversation, you know, what is, what is your go-to round and, and, you know, yeah. maybe even like a couple rounds people could evaluate when they're, if they're trying to find their EDC gun. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. So you want something with expansion, plain and simple. You want something with enough juice or enough go like decent velocity uh, that will expand. And so the two lines that I'll run are like the federal punch and the HST line. So the punch is more of a budget friendly round. So it's, I mean, when you're talking about carry ammo, it's not like you go through a lot. So you can, you can spend a couple bucks on ammo and not worry about it. Cause it's not like you're plinking hundreds of rounds at the range with it. You just load eight rounds or 15 rounds in the mag. Right. And then a year later, like on your birthday, go out and shoot it and swap that stuff out. Right. So like, it's not, doesn't matter if it's a little bit more money, as long as you know, it's going to do its job, but the punch is a great option for, uh, pretty darn affordable, uh, that I'll run in my guns as well. And, and it, both of them are super accurate. Both of them are soft enough to shoot well, and both of them have terrific expansion. 
Awesome. And we have a go wild code with federal. So I'll put that in the link for anybody that's interested in this. I don't, I, there's some rounds it doesn't apply to. So I'm not sure on what people are shopping for. We'll drop that in all the gear that Josh is talking about. It's in the show notes too. You kind of talked about an optic a second ago and you, you do a lot of competition shoots. I was just kind of curious talk uh, if you could uh, expand a little bit on your approach to optics um, and, 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 you know, especially with the EDC, like how that interferes or doesn't with your carry. Yeah, so for me, um, I will carry with a dot. I love a dot. I think a dot allows target focus, which allows us to shoot better without worrying about maybe squinting an eye to get that mm. perfect lined iron sight. Uh, like dots are great. I can take new shooters that have never worked on a dot and I can turn them into like just shock them in like half hour of just working through that target fo focus versus front sight focus. So I like them. I like dots. But uh, for my carry gun, same reason that I, we talked a little bit about something I could conceal. Um, I like the gun to be as small as possible. I like to forget I'm wearing it. And for me, in most of the scenarios that I can imagine needing to shoot in my carry pistol, they're pretty up close and personal, likely. Um, you know, I'm not out there looking to, like, you know, defend the world. I just, I'm, I'm trying to get home safe and get my kids home safe and stuff like that. And I've never needed to deploy a pistol to date. So I, I don't have uh, many carry pistols with dots, but like I said, when I'm wearing a lot of clothes, sometimes I'll wear a full size gun. And in that case, I'll have a dot on it. Nice. Um, one thing that I've, uh, I've, I always find interesting is people's approach to holsters. And, you know, I, th I think it might've been Melissa Bachman, uh, that, that kind of talked about like her approach is just go try a ton of them. You know, really you need to just yeah. kind of see how they all operate, but I'm curious on the, uh, the holster that you've found most comfortable or you would like to share. And then I'm also curious if your holster kind of varies per gun or if you have like a brand you really like. Sure. Yep. So uh, I like uh, I like to carry up front where I can get to it quickly whenever possible. Um, so I have a single clip. You can see this is a Weber trifecta holster and it's just super simple. It doesn't have a bunch of wings on it or anything. It just does have a, a little lever on it that allows it to at least not cant on your waist. Right. That just goes right up front. Single clip. And I've tried the ones that are really wide and I just felt like I noticed them too much. Um, and then even that up front was a little uncomfortable for the first maybe week that I wore it. But I was like, I'm wearing it all week. I don't care. I'm going to wear it all week around the house. I'm going to do that. And like a week later, I was like, oh, yeah, like I am carrying a pistol. And this is good. <laughs> yeah. so, you, so you just get used to it. Uh, we talked about uh, carrying in slacks. And so like I've got this little option. So uh, just a little pocket gun that I'll, I'll rock when I'm carrying slacks and I wear a little pocket holster with that. So obviously different tech, super low tech, super easy, but like I can have that in swim trunks and a t-shirt and you know, I'm good. Right. So like, that's my, what am I going to carry that nobody will notice gun and then, and the holster setup. And then if I'm really on the farm or I'm out in the country, I'm on a hunt, you know, I'll carry a full size outside the waistband on my hip holster. Um, just so that I can lean over work, run a chainsaw, run, do whatever I need to do around the farm, super yeah. comfortable and have that pistol really easy to get to. And, and what are the brands that you were carrying there specifically? We'll put a link to that gear in the show notes. Yeah. So these are both Weber tactical. They just make some pretty darn nice Kydex mm -hmm. with good attachments that have held up for me. Um, and then this little guy is just, uh, I think it's a DeSantis. Yep. DeSantis little pocket holster. So awesome. again, none of them are. None of them cost an arm and a leg. They're both, you know, options are super affordable, yet uh, they work great. Awesome. I'm kind of curious, you know, we talked about firearms, uh, but, you know, EDC is just a little bit of everything that you're carrying. Is there anything you've tried to carry, you know, every day and you just, you just couldn't do it or you stopped carrying for whatever reason? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> so uh, I live in uh, the River Valley, uh, way up in Minnesota. And we've got all the critters, right? So we've got wolves and black bears and everything else. And I'm in the woods a lot. And so there are many days where I'm in town, then I'm in the woods and I'm in town, then I'm in the woods. And so for a while, um, you know, when I'm in the woods, I want to carry a 10 mil. And so I had a 10 millimeter barrel fitted into this uh, Staccato XL 40 cal gun. So I can have 10 mil. I, I just wanted a bigger caliber mm -hmm. some with some actual penetration in case I had, you know, 
Billy Black Bear charging me or something like that. <laughs> well, try this this monster uh, inside the waistband on appendix, and it's like you know you're getting in and out of the car. And it's like okay, okay, this is silly. You know, you feel like the Joker when you draw, yeah. you know, coming out. So uh, lesson learned. I'm like, okay, okay. So that gun goes outside the waistband <laughs> on the hip. Uh, other the smaller versions can go in the appendix. Uh, rig. <laughs> and and then uh, and this may be kind of along the same lines. I'm kind of curious. Last question here: like, what's the weirdest thing you've carried uh, uh, for any kind of EDC? It could be firearm or, or some other kind of weapon. But like, what's the weirdest thing you've carried either on the farm, in city, or whatever? Yeah, so I'm a trapper, right? So uh, I trap beaver and muskrat and coyote and all that stuff in the winter, and really love it. Well, I've got a suppressed um well quartz and uh like little race gun it looks like it's from outer space right because i got a <laughs> vortex dot on top of it the whole nine yards i got a holster set up for it and so like the suppressor sticks out the yeah. end of the holster like that far and you know i'm out there with you know i'm trapping so i've got like a big bomber hat on bright orange like overalls all this stuff and then i've got the space gun and neighbors you know look at me like you know like what what is that? You know, yeah, this is a trapping gun. You know, like that is not a trapping gun. You know? <laughs> a trapping gun's a hundred dollar little revolver in case you drop it in the creek. I was like, well, this is my trapping gun. Yeah. Well, yeah. It sounds like a, uh, it's almost like a Cowboys versus aliens. You know, you got some kind of like a little weird mashup vibe there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Well, this was awesome. Really fun look at uh, some of the gear you're using. We're going to have Josh on for another episode, but for today, man, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Oh, and uh, before I forget, let's tell people where to find you, you know, YouTube, Instagram, whatever, whatever your social channels are, let's make sure they can find you to t keep in touch with your content. Sure. So on uh, Instagram, it's just Josh underscore Fralick. You find me there for all kinds of trapping, hunt and shooting kind of stuff. And then on YouTube, I have a channel called Josh Fralick's Addicted, where we do hunts, we do some higher end content and all kinds of things that you might find interesting. Awesome, man. We'll put links to that in the show. Again, thanks for coming on. Thank you, sir. Right, I really enjoyed this show with Josh. If you did too, please make sure you subscribe. The button's down below. Make sure you go ahead and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we have new episodes. We do drop new episodes every single week on Wednesdays, 7.30 p.m. You can also listen to it as a podcast, but I really like the YouTube show, so I think you should just do that. Reminder, all of the gear mentioned is in the show notes. If you buy any of that gear, we probably make money. If we make money, we donate 1% of our proceeds to Raise Them Outdoors. Raise Them Outdoors is a camp that teaches kids and often their parents to shoot, hunt, fish. It's all the stuff that we love. And if you really want to give back and you're going to buy this stuff anyways, please do buy it through the links. It supports the show. It supports a camp that like I'm a big believer in. I'm on the board. Love what Raising Outdoors is doing. You can help. Make sure you find Josh. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel. Otherwise, you don't have to wait until he comes back on. He is coming back. We got one more show with Josh Fraley coming up, but not today. For today, I'm out. <laughs>